y'all, she's not quitting church there. She's going out to, to help out in children's church this morning. So I don't want anybody to think she was just singing and leaving, all right? Amen. Amen. All right. Everybody take your Bibles here this morning. Turn to the book of John. John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. We're going to read verse number 27 here this morning. And, of course, we'll be reading other verses too. But uh, we're going to use that as our text verse here this morning. John chapter number 14. And verse number 27, when you find your place, we'll stand to your feet and show honor and respect to the Word of God here this morning. John chapter 14, verse 27. Boy, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. 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 Good to be in the Lord's house with the Lord's people. Amen. Lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's been so good to us. Amen. He's worthy of all praise and honor and glory that we can give to Him. Amen. Amen. John chapter number 14 amen. and verse number 27. If you find a place, let me hear you say amen. 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 John 14, 27. Jesus says here, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let me read that verse again. Jesus says here, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I want to preach just on this thought uh, out of this verse here. My peace I give unto you. My peace I give unto you. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. Thank you for loving us and being yes. good to us. Thank you for the shed blood. Thank you, Lord, for songs about the blood. Thank you, Lord, for uh, just allowing us to be able to come together to worship you and to praise you. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person, Lord, that's here today. Yes, God, I just thank you for another opportunity, Lord, the privilege to be able to stand up and to share your word. God, I pray that you fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Give me power and wisdom. Give me the words to say. I pray this will be a help to everyone here this morning. God, I just pray, Lord, that you use me for your glory. God, I pray we'll all get what we need and draw closer to you and be used by you, Lord, to lift you up so that the world can come to know Christ as their Savior before it's eternally too late. Lord, I ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Everybody can be seated. Look there again, John 14, 27. Uh, we're pretty much going to be using a lot of verses out of this chapter here, chapters 14 and 15. Uh, but verse 27 is our text verse here. That first word there, peace. That first word there, peace. Uh, there are so many people in this world seeking out peace. Amen. Amen. Uh, there is so much that you see uh, when it comes to uh, global issues, especially when it comes to the Middle East. Uh, people are trying to find peace. They're seeking peace. Uh, people in the world today, uh, in their own in their own lives, in their homes, their families, uh, there's always something that's going on, and people are turning to this, that, or the other, trying to find peace in their life because nobody really, if they're if, they, if they're honest about it, they're honest with themselves and honest with everyone around them. No one likes to have drama going on all the time. Yeah. Nobody likes to have problems after problems after problems. Oh. Everybody wants peace in their lives. Amen. Well, the Lord promised us that we'd have peace. Look here, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Notice how he says my peace. That's what's important right there. Amen. 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 Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Mm. So said the title of the message here this morning is, My Peace I Give Unto You. Yeah. How can we have peace in the midst of our own struggles and battles and be caught up in the middle of this uh, the world's wickedness and unrest? Amen. I mean, every time you turn the TV on, there's something bad going on. Right. Uh, we, we're in the midst of uh, this political season. Uh, and it seems like there's always somebody fighting with somebody, somebody arguing with somebody, somebody upset with somebody. Yeah. Uh, and then we live in the day and age of social media. Uh, and every, there was a time when people had issues and they, they were secret. Yeah. They kept them to themselves. Everybody with me here this morning? Yeah. Now we live in an age where everybody airs their dirty laundry out on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and they want everybody to know all the battles, all the struggles. And they want everybody to know all the people that's done them wrong. That's where we live at today. Right. And we wonder why that we don't have peace. And there's not much peace in this world today. How can we have peace in the midst of our own struggles and battles? And being caught up in the middle of this world's wickedness and unrest? We can find peace in God's promises. Yep. I mean, <clears throat> there's so many promises that we can that we could go to in God's Word uh, and turn to to get help to find peace. 
Uh, but to me, there, there are some right here just in this passage of Scripture in John chapter 14 and in 15 uh, that we'll talk about here today. And I believe that if we would key in on these, uh, I'm going to give you three things here this morning. And if we key in on these three things, I believe that we would have true peace in our lives. Man. So there's a lot of things this world offers and it gives you a break for a moment. It brings some temporary peace, maybe. Yeah. But it doesn't give you peace for the long run. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm seeking. I don't Amen. want peace just for the moment. I need peace for every situation that comes my way. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad I've got the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad I've got His promises. The first one I want you to look at here that will help bring peace in your life. Number one is the promise in prayer. The promise in prayer. Yeah. Look at verses 13, 14, and 15. John chapter 14, verses 13 through 15. The Bible says, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now all these verses go together here. So if we want peace in our lives, number one, we find peace in the promise in prayer. Yeah. The Lord gives us some specific things about prayer here, though. A lot of people, they'll just, they, they, like to, they like to quote the scriptures that talks about asking in His name and He'll give it to you. Yeah. But they got to look and put that into context of what scripture is saying here. Mom. Everybody with me this morning? Amen. I believe in putting things into context. Right. Amen. 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 I don't believe in going through and cherry picking a verse here or there yeah. and, and trying to create something off of that. I like taking scripture and putting it into context. Yeah. So we see where in verse 27, the Lord says he's going to give us his, that we can have his peace. Amen. And then he tells us in the surrounding verses how we can have his peace. Mm -hmm. And we see here verses 13 through 15 is talking about prayer. I'm glad that I have peace in prayer. Amen. Amen. I, by the way, I'm glad that God still answers prayer. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that I can go to Him in prayer. I'm glad that He always meets me there. Right. He hears my prayer. I love Psalm chapter 40 and verse number 1. Psalm chapter number 40 and verse number 1 is the Psalm of David. And it says how he waited patiently on the Lord. And how the Lord heard his prayer and climbed unto him and heard his prayer. Amen. Amen. I, I, but you know what? David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. Amen. I waited patiently on the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Harley and I were talking about this last Sunday, uh, about that, about not being patient on the Lord. Uh, and I, I remember when I was growing up, uh, there was a preacher, that, uh, a preacher that we had when I was probably about 11 or 12 years old, uh, about 11 or 12 years old. And I remember a message he preached from Psalm chapter 40 and verse 1. Uh, and, and, he, and he preached and he made this statement and has stuck with me all these years. He talked about how that a lot of Christians today look to Jesus Christ as like some type of cosmic bellhop. And that is the way a lot of Christians look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh. We expect that when we fall on our knees and we say, Lord, give me this and give me that, we expect God to instantly give it to Preach. us. Amen. That's not how it works. Amen. Sometimes Amen. we go to the Lord in prayer and it seems like, man, He answers it instantly. And there's other times that we wait, that we wait patiently on the Lord. There are some things that we need to put in perspective when it comes to prayer. And by the way, we get all these things right. We'll have peace. Amen. Even if we have to wait on the Lord, yeah. we have peace in the midst of the waiting on God to move. Amen. And I'll explain what I'm talking about here this morning. Look back at verses 13 through 15. Everybody still with me here today? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Jesus says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. A lot of people, that's as far as they get in that verse. And so then they say, Well, I prayed for this, and I prayed for that, I prayed for a big house, I prayed for a new car, I prayed for clothes, I prayed for this. And I don't have those things. Mm. Well, let's put all this in perspective here. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Y'all notice that there? Oh. That the Father may be glorified Amen. in the Son. Preach. Verse 14, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. A lot of people just key in on verse 14. Look at verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So this is what I gather from when it talks about prayer. We can ask in Jesus' name, and he will do it. But when he does it, he will do it to glorify the Father. Amen. Amen. Not everything that people pray for glorifies the Father. Amen. 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 There's a lot of people, they'll get, on, they'll get on their knees. By the way, some people, the only time they pray is when they want 
something from God. Amen. 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 How about in those times, how about how about finding time in your life to fall on your knees and just spend some time praying and thanking God for Amen. what He's done for you. Amen. Amen. Spend some time to say, Lord, thank you for being so good to me. I'm going to tell you right now, everything that happened down the road here Thursday, you better believe that I have taken some time to thank God. I, I hate it for the people down the road here, but I sure am glad that that storm didn't wobble this way a half a mile more or we might not have a church building here. I was on the front porch. I might not be no fat preacher Mike anymore. Everybody with me here this morning? Right. Amen. I thank God that Amen. he watched out for me and protected me and kept me safe through the storm. Come on. Amen. And, it, and I've heard many other stories and reports from people how the Lord protected everybody through the storm. Right. I was so thankful Amen. for that. Amen. Nobody died. Nobody died. And I don't, I don't think I even heard anything about injuries maybe. Maybe, the, maybe a car wreck I think there was on 321. A mail truck turned over. I don't even know if they were injured. But uh, through all of that, through all the storms, God took care of us and watched over us. I mean, I'm very yeah, thankful yeah. for that. But a lot of times, people, the only time they pray is when they want to ask God for some material possession. That's right. And you know what? It's not always about material possessions. By the way, that's why a lot of people, they get mixed up and they think that, uh, that they, when they look at the blessings from God, they only measure it in material possessions. I'm going to tell you right now, I've got many blessings bestowed upon my life from God Almighty that is not material possession. No. And it's things that money cannot buy. No. Amen. Right. And then, by the way, it's things that won't, won't decay, won't rot, won't go away. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for God's blessings that money cannot buy. Amen. I'm glad that we can have, we, we can be in the midst of turmoil. We can have a lot of things going on in our life, in, in our personal life, in our families, in the world around us but still have peace. Yep. Amen. Amen. And there's promise in prayer. Jesus said, ask, he said, ask in Jesus' name. If we ask in his name, he will do it to glorify the Father. And I said, not everything glorifies the Father. I want you to look at John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Still in the context here. We're still in the same passage of Scripture. All this stuff goes together here. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, by the way, trials and struggles, some of those battles that come our way that we don't feel like that we're, we're asking God to bring some peace, sometimes those battles and struggles are necessary. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Amen? Because it helps us get where we need to be so we can bear more fruit. Amen. Because everything's going to be about glorifying the Father. Amen? Amen. Verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. Amen. Well, I like that there. Amen. Jesus said, without him, we can do nothing. Amen. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. All right, so there's some things to point out there. We're supposed to live for God yeah. and bear fruit for Him. Man. They say, preacher, what's this got to do with prayer? Just pay attention. We're getting there. We are supposed to live for God and bear fruit for Him. Yeah. That is our job as a Christian. Amen. Right. You know the reason why a lot of people don't have peace in their life? They're not doing their job. Nope. Hey Amen? Yeah. They're not doing what a Christian is supposed to do. We're to bear fruit. Man. We are to live righteously. Right. We're to live in such a way that honors God and lifts Him up. And when people look at us, they can see Jesus Christ in us. Man. We are to bear fruit. In other words, we're supposed to go out and share the gospel Amen. and see folks get saved. We're supposed to go out and, and, and glorify God and proclaim to the world how good God has been to us and what God has done for us He can do for them. Amen. We're supposed to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. everywhere that we go. Amen. We're going to give God thanks in everything that we do, every right. situation that we're in. We ought to thank Him. Amen. 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 So the Scriptures tells us here, we live for God and bear fruit for Him. Then... We ask. Then we ask. Amen. 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 We live for Him and bear fruit 
Then we ask. Amen. And then he answers. Maybe, maybe some of you in here have been praying for something specific for a long, long time. And you had not got an answer. Mom. And it might be because you're getting things out of order. Mom. Amen. I believe in doing things decent and in order. Yeah, and right. God gives us some structure in his word. Maybe, just maybe, you've been praying and asking God for something. And God hasn't given it to you yet. Because you haven't proven yourself faithful to do <coughs> what he's told you to do to begin with. Amen. And that's to live for him and to bear fruit. Amen. 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 We live for God and bear fruit for him. Then we ask and he will answer. A, by the way, a righteous man will ask for things that will bring glory to the Father. Amen. 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 A righteous man, somebody that loves God, that Jesus Christ is their number one priority, they'll pray and they'll ask God for things that will glorify Him. Amen. Everybody with me here? Yep. Everything that God, material possessions that God gives us, in turn we ought to use those to glorify Him. Amen? Amen. 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 How many of y'all in here has got a vehicle? At least one vehicle. You know how you can glorify God with that vehicle? Be faithful to his house. Amen. Pick somebody up and bring them to his house. Right. Amen. Amen. Put some gospel tracks in that vehicle, and when you're out and about, pass those gospel tracks out. Man. Everybody with me here? Amen. I mean, it's just that simple. All the different things that God can bless you with material-wise... You ought to use them to glorify Him. Amen. Amen. Right. By the way, it's not just material possessions either. How about when you're asking God to give you peace in your life? See, we're talking about peace here this morning. And when you pray and you ask God to give you peace in different situations in your life, how about you pray in such a way that it's like this. Lord, please, please Lord, bring some peace in this particular situation here so that it opens up the opportunity for me to be a witness for you. Amen. Lord, bring some peace in this situation so I'm not so stressed and worn down so that I can go and be a witness a little bit more. Does that make sense here this morning? Amen. 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 A righteous man will pray for things, not for himself, not to glorify himself, but to glorify the Father. Why? Because everything Everything that the Lord Jesus Christ does will glorify the Father. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So how do we get peace in our lives? Through prayer. But we got to make sure that our prayer life is right. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Alright, so the promise in prayer. Jesus promised that if we pray in His name, He will do it to glorify the Father. Amen? But everything, not everything, glorifies the Father. Amen. What, exactly right. He didn't say when. He will do it. He yeah. said he'll do it. But he didn't say when. We're supposed to live for God and bear fruit for him. Then we ask. And he'll answer on his own time. Yeah. Amen. But he will answer. Yeah. If you're living for him, lifting him up, doing what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. And as I said earlier, God will give you the peace that you need while you're waiting patiently for him mm -hmm. to move. And to answer that prayer, God will give you peace. How many of y'all have prayed about something before? And you didn't see the answer right then, but you just knew that God was going to take care of that situation. Amen. Amen. I've been there, amen. Many of y'all have too. That there was something you was praying about, and boy, you was really burdened about that, and you didn't you didn't see it answered right away, but you knew everything was going to be all right. right. That God was in control. Amen. amen. And that's the kind, you know what? That's the kind of peace that Christians can have that this world is seeking, and they can't have yeah. until they have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm glad that I'm saved. Amen. Yes, I'm glad I've been born again. Amen. I'm glad I have access to God the Father Amen. through prayer. Amen. I'm glad He hears my prayers. Amen. I'm glad I have the honor and the privilege to live for Him and to right. honor Him right. and to lift Him up. Amen. And while I'm doing that and bearing fruit for Him, He hears my prayers Amen. and He's working behind the scenes on my behalf. Amen. Amen. Right, bro. We spend so much time focusing on trying to fix this situation and fix that situation. You know what we just need to do? I think this passage of Scripture is, is what it's telling us. We just need to stay focused in on what God would have us to do and just make Him number one, put the blinders onto the world, stay focused in on the Lord Jesus yes. Christ and do what He said do, and He'll take care of everything else all around That's us. Right, yeah. Amen. And many of us in here, we have seen that to be true in our lives. Yeah. God has proven that time and time and time again. Amen. Amen. I Amen. have peace in this world. Right. Amen. In the midst of my battles and my struggles, in the midst of the chaos of this world, oh. I have peace. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. When that storm hit down here, I mean, that's, when they say it sounds like a freight train, they ain't lying. Amen. It sounded like a freight train barreling down the tracks when I was out on the front porch. At the same time, it sounded like somebody shoving limbs in a wood chipper. Amen. You know what? I had peace. I come inside the door, and when I left out here, I had no idea a tornado had touched down out here. God watched over me, protected me, kept me safe, and gave me peace in the midst Amen. of the storm. Amen. God will give you peace in the midst of your storm, whatever it is. Amen. Amen. No doubt, everybody in here is going through something. Everybody in here is facing something. But in the midst of that storm, in the midst of those trials, in the midst of those battles, God can give you peace. Amen. He said He'd never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. You want proof of that? You can fall on your knees and talk to Him in prayer. Amen. He'll always meet you there. Amen. We need to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing so that those effects, so those prayers will work. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Amen. Number two, something else that brings peace to us is the promise of his spirit. The promise of his spirit. Look at verses 16 through 26. Jesus says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. See, the world's looking for peace. See, they're missing something. They're making a, missing a big peace that brings peace. Everybody with me here? Yeah. Verse 17, Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he here is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. I'm glad when I'm going through battles and struggles, personally. Amen. When my family's going through battles and struggles. I look at the chaos that this world is in. All the, the new sicknesses, the coronavirus that's spreading around. All the, all the wars and all the things that's happening in this world. I'm glad that in the midst of all that I can have peace. Why? Amen. Through my prayer life. Yeah. But also because of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Those of us that are saved, we have somebody to cling to and lean on that this world does not have. Oh. And that's the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. 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 We read about that here, verses 16 through 26. Well, notice there's some there's seven things. I like that. There's seven things here that talks about the Holy Ghost. He's said to be the comforter. He's the spirit of truth. He dwells with you. He dwells in you. He shows and demonstrates real love. He teaches us all things and brings all things to our remembrance. That number seven is the number of what in the Bible? Completion. Number of completion. I'm glad I can have complete peace Amen. in my Amen. life because of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I mean, just look at all those things that's, that's mentioned there about the Holy Ghost. He's described, he's called the comforter. Amen. Is that not what this world is looking for? Amen. They're looking for comfort. The problem is, is they're looking for comfort in all the wrong places. Amen. Right. I'm glad that I've got God. Amen. In my life, I'm glad I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He dwells with me and in me. Amen. He goes with me everywhere that I go. He's with me in every situation that I'm in. And when I'm down and discouraged, He comforts me. Yeah. Amen. He's the comforter. Then it says that He's the Spirit of truth. This world's full of lies. Amen. And that's all they talk about in the media is lie after lie after lie Amen. after lie. I'm glad I've got a source of truth. Absolute truth. Amen. Amen. And I know it's true. Why? Because the truth dwells within me. Amen. Amen. It says he dwells with you. 
Then it says, He dwells within you. I'm glad I've been sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. Amen. And that's kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself here. But I'm glad that I've got that Holy Spirit of promise on the inside of me. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that the Holy Ghost is a source of real love. Amen. There's a lot of fake in this world. Come on. Amen. Yeah. There's a lot of fake in this world. I'm glad that Jesus is real. I'm glad that I can feel the love of God. Isn't that a blessing? When you're going through a battle, and when you feel like you're all alone, and you feel like you've got nobody that you can turn to and cling to, yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ is there. Amen. He loves you. Amen. And He shows you that He loves you. He demonstrates that love. He demonstrated the greatest love on Calvary. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad that He rose again, and He still demonstrates love to me every single day. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. yep. He's the comforter, the spirit of truth. Dwells with you, dwells in you. He's the source of real love. I like this. He teaches us all things. You know what? You know the reason why a lot of Christians have no peace in their lives? is because they don't spend time in God's Word. Amen. The more time you spend in His Word, the more the Lord will teach you things. Yep. Yep. And, then, and He'll teach you and you'll start finding more and more of His promises in His Word. Like how He said, He'd never leave you nor forsake you. How is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? Amen. Amen. And the more you read His Word and study His Word, He'll teach you some things. Amen. Amen. By the way, the Lord allowed you to go through some things and experience some things to teach you what you need for down the road. Right. Right. I mean, I'm glad He's teaching us every step of the way. Amen. The problem is a lot of people don't pay attention. And I'm glad He also, He'll bring all things to our remembrance. How many of y'all have ever been in a situation before? Been in some tight spot. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere... A verse pops in your head. Amen. And it just gives you what you need. I'm going to be okay. Amen. Boy, I've experienced that several times. Yes. Be in a situation and all of a sudden, boom, a Bible verse popped in my mind. And I may not remember the book, the chapter, and the verse, but I, I remember the scripture itself. Amen. And a pop in my mind. I'm like, you know what? God's word is true. Man. And it just gives me that peace that I need in the moment. That's right. Well, God sure is good, is he not? If the Holy Spirit brings per the Holy Spirit does bring perfect peace. If you're not sealed with the Holy Spirit, then you have no peace. This world doesn't have peace. Because so many people are not sealed with the Holy Spirit. There are so many people that have not put their faith and their trust in the gospel for salvation. Everybody with me here? And that's the reason why in this world there's no peace in this world. Because there's so many people lost and on their way to a devil's hell. They don't, they're not sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And so they're turning to everything the world has to offer to try to bring peace into their lives. Yeah. I'm going to go on this trip. I'm going to buy this object. I'm going to do this. I'm going to hang around here. I'm going to do this and do that. And they might have some joy for a moment. But they don't really have peace. Nope. Amen. I'm glad I can lay my head on my pillow at night. Yeah. And I've got peace. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that I know if I don't open up my eyes here on this earth in the morning, I'm going to open them up in glory. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's Amen. peace right there. Amen. Yeah. And this world is searching for it. And they don't have it. And the problem is, it's a free gift that's being extended to all. Amen? Amen. That's what's so sad. They could have peace if they really, really wanted it. Amen. The promise in prayer, the promise of His Spirit. Number three, the promise of His return. Look at verse 28. Jesus said, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, Ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Now I know this is in context of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. But notice there, I, I want to look at those words there where it says, when it says, I go away and come again unto you. And then I'm glad that the Lord gave us that same promise after his resurrection, and before he ascended up to heaven on high, he gave a promise that he was going to come back. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 it doesn't matter what this world throws your way. We as Christians, those who have been born again, we can have peace in the midst of everything. Amen. Knowing that one day we are going to escape. One day we're going to leave this old sin sick world behind and we're going to be changed from here to there in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. And we won't have to worry about the politics. Right. We won't have to worry about the storms. Oh. We won't have to worry about death and destruction Amen. and disease. Amen. But we'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ forever Amen. and forever Amen. and forever Amen. and forever.
whatever. Amen. So you know what that helps me do today? It gives me the strength that I need to be able to make it through. It brings me peace today Amen. knowing that there's coming a time and it could be the very next minute when the Lord steps out and calls us home. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Can y'all believe I made it to the third point? This is the first time I'm having y'all turn somewhere else. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look at verses 51 through 57. This sort of bring you. This sort of bring you a little bit more peace here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look at 51 through 57. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. Hey, I like that there. We shall not all sleep. Amen. Hey man, I, I believe. How many of y'all know the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, here this morning? Amen. Hey Amen. Hey I, I, I love this here. We all have had loved ones that were saved and they've done, done died and went on home and be with the Lord. Their bodies have been buried. That's right. They absent from the body to be present with the Lord. We're with the Lord. Amen. We're still here. The Bible says we shall not all sleep. You know what that means? I believe, by the way, everything that has to happen for the rapture to take yeah. place, y'all know this, has already happened. It can happen right now. Amen. Be just fine with me. Amen. You know what that means? Everybody that saves, if the rapture were to happen right now, everybody that's sitting in this sanctuary right now, those over in the nursery and those in children's church and teen church that know the Lord is their Savior, not one of us that are saved will ever experience death. We'll just be changed from here to there in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Right, amen. Amen. That will bring you some peace right there. Hey, that we're living in that time when the Lord's going to step out on the clouds and hey, maybe some of us here, hey, maybe I won't have to worry about death. I, maybe I won't have to worry about that pain and that suffering that comes with death sometimes. But I'll just be changed from here to there in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. Amen. What a blessed thought. Amen. amen. Notice, look at it again. Verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50, uh, starting at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. Hey man, it's not a mystery no more. It's been revealed. Amen. Hey man, Amen. and one day, hey, one day when it's not only going to be something that we know about, it's going to be something that we're going to experience. Amen. Amen. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And I like this because you know what this passage of Scripture is talking about? It's talking about that glorified body. Amen. Amen. Talking about that glorified body. Look at it in verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised. Stop right there. Time out. How many of y'all got loved ones that have already gone on home to be with the Lord? Amen. You know what that's saying right there? It was talking about that the dead shall be raised. Yeah. You know what I was talking about, right? Yeah. Their body's coming up out of the ground. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Their body's coming up out of the ground. Yeah. You say, preacher, what about those? I'll go ahead and answer a question that was asked. I'll go ahead and answer this. This was a question that was asked. What about all of those that died hundreds of years ago, a thousand years ago? They don't have no body left. We serve a God that spoke everything into existence, right? Amen. And created man from dust. Amen. Don't you think he can call that dust to rise back up Amen. into a full of man? Amen. 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 Same thing with some people would say, and this was the question that was asked, what about those that are cremated? Because I grew up and I heard some people on, on uh, some of my family say, well, you know, if you're cremated, if you, if you have your body cremated... Uh, you know, there'll be nobody there to be raised. Uh, what about people that died in house fires and car fires? Burn their bodies up. We're not limiting God. God's able to do all things. Amen. Amen. God will raise that body up. Amen. Everybody with me here? And I'm glad that he's going to do that. But he's not only going to raise that body up. Let's look at this scripture a little bit further. Look at verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So in this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Hold death, where is thy sting? Hold grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Those that were saved and they've already passed away, their body's going to come up out of the ground. 
And in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, they'll be changed from here to there. Yep. And just like that, Amen. they'll receive their glorified body. Amen. Amen. It won't be a dead body no more. Amen. Amen. It'll be alive. It'll be a perfect body. Amen. Not only that, those of us that are alive and remain, Amen, and we're called up with them over 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Amen. This old corruptible body, Amen, will be changed from here to there in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, and we'll receive our glorified Amen. body. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more sorrow. Oh. There'll be no more pain. Pain. There'll be no more suffering. Right. Amen. There'll be no more aging. There'll be no more aches or pains. Amen. 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 Have a perfect body. Many of y'all here this morning, I'm going to work myself out of my heel. <laughs> Many folks, their battles and their struggles and things that they don't have peace about in their lives right now is physical. Yep. Sickness. Yeah. Pain. Suffering. Aches and pains and medications and diseases. They're gone. When the Lord, when that last trump sounds and the Lord calls us home, they're gone. Yeah. Amen. That will give you a little bit of peace. Those of y'all here this morning that's struggling with those aches and pains and struggling with some sickness. Maybe you got some bad news from the doctor. I'm going to tell you right now, that bad news ain't going to stick around very long because when the Lord sounds, amen, yeah. and steps out of the clouds yeah. and calls us home to be with Him, right. they're gone, they're gone, yeah. they're gone. Amen. Yeah. All those things we worry about, how we're going to make the rent, how we're going to make the power bill, how we're going to make the car payment, how we're going to make the insurance payment, how we're going to put food on the table, how we're going to keep clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, amen. One, we don't have to worry about that now because the Lord's completely in control, but we're human and we worry, do we not? Yeah, There's going to come a time those worries are going to be gone. Amen. Because we're going to be with the Lord and He's going to take care of us forever amen. and forever <coughs> and forever. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for that. Not only that, Talking about his, his coming, the promise of his return. A lot of times we, we stop at the rapture. Amen. And that's a good place to stop and get excited about that. Amen. And see, the Lord also promised that he's coming back. Yep. Amen. Amen. At the end of the seven year tribulation period, he's coming back. Yep. And guess who's coming with him? We are. We are. Man. Are Man. We're coming back with him. And he's going to rule and reign on this earth. For a thousand years. The millennial reign of Christ. And you know what this world's going to be like? This world's going to be like it was in the days of the Garden of Eden before the fall. Peace and perfection. Right. Why? Because Jesus will be here. And he's going to rule and reign and keep everything in check. You know what? I, I, let me say this. I mentioned this last Sunday. I, I alluded to this last Sunday. I'll mention it again here this morning. I, I, politics, politics. All the politics. It is. You know, and, and I'll say this. And I'll, I'll say this, and I don't care who it hair lips. I voted for Trump. Amen. I'm going to vote for Trump again. Amen. 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 I'm very thankful for him. I'll yeah. say so. He is just a man. Yeah. So we need to be very careful of putting him on a pedestal. He is just a man. But I'm going to say this right. I pray for my president. Yeah. And I'm very thankful for some things that he has done, protecting religious liberties and things of that. Things like, everybody with me here? Amen. And how many of y'all seen the talks where he's wanting to try to. Do, uh, do a, uh, what's it, where the president signs something in the law, I forget what I was phrased, talking about bringing, putting prayer back in school. Oh, and yeah. talks about that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, boy, I'd like to see that happen come to pass. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm very thankful for these things. And I'm very thankful for a president that will protect religious liberties. Yeah. But you know what? I'm not putting my faith in this government. No. Man's government. No. There's going to come a time when we're raptured out of here, this whole world is going to put their faith in a government. And that government will fail them. Amen. But when the Lord comes back and He rules and reigns here on this earth, you can put complete faith and trust in that government Amen. because it will be pure and righteous and holy. Amen. 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 You may be going through some things. God's given us some promises that we can cling to to bring peace into our lives. The promise in prayer. He'll meet us there. That's right. He hears our prayers. Right. And if we live for Him and honor Him and glorify Him and lift Him up, He'll hear our prayers. He'll answer our prayers. Amen? Amen. And we just got to be patient. Amen. But see, in the midst of being patient, the Lord will give you peace while being patient. To be patient for when He answers that prayer. Not only does He give us promise in prayer, amen, but He gives us the promise of His Spirit. Amen. amen. And I'm glad that the Holy Ghost is with me and dwells me, lives with me, leads me and guides me in the paths that I need to go. Amen. amen. 
And then I'm glad I have the promise of his return. He's coming today when the Lord's coming back. He's going to call us all home to be with him. And then he's going to come back and rule and reign here on this earth and be in complete control. Amen. Because of all of that, I can have real peace today. I don't need the fat bank account to bring me peace. I don't need the brand new expensive things to bring me peace. Right. Everybody with me here? Amen. You know what I have? I've got the Lord and His promises. Amen. That's all I need Amen. to bring me peace. Yeah. Every head bowed, every eye closed, everyone standing to their feet. This altar is open here this morning.